Hi and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Sam and this is our van that we took and turned into our off-grid camper. So this is our off-grid adventure rig. And over the last few videos, we've been upgrading the electrical system. We took a small inverter out and we've put in the Phoenix 3000 volt amp hour inverter and we're powering that off the Fogstar 608 Beast battery. Now that battery is something else. It is absolutely brilliant. So we've had the battery in now for over a month. We've been doing this job for a long, long time. It took us about a month, to be honest. But um, yeah, today's video, we're gonna finish off the final connections, the final last bits of charging. We've been adding solar. We've also added a battery charger for the times where we're not using the vehicle and we wanna keep it in good order. So conditioned and maintained. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. So this is the solar cable we're using. It's uh, six mil and I'm gonna push that up inside this trunk in here and hopefully we don't get too many problems. I've got the light out at the minute, that was just so we could utilise that hole. I don't know if you can see that there, just to help us get the conduit away. Now we've got it where it needs to be, we're just going to bring one end into here and we'll mess about with the rest and get it up, up there. So tonight's job, get that down, drop that cupboard, move that cupboard onto this side of the van. But we've got the cable in, we've managed to run it out in trunking right up through that pillar in the cavity and then we popped it out at the top with the rest of the cables what we'll do is we'll dress all that back in but before that we'll take it along and pop it out up onto the roof so we'll make our roof penetration first and then we'll come and have a look down here and see where, where we pop out as we're moving the solar we're going to use one of the Scanstrut's dual cable seal these are really good I'm really impressed with these so we're putting a new cable in, a little bit bigger to support what we've done on the roof and to protect us if we decide to put bigger panels on. But yeah, there you go. Let's have a quick look at the instructions. Template there, that is a fitting guide. That looks pretty good. Pretty straightforward to be honest. I think that's going to be real easy there. But how nice is that? How well made. That is quality there. I understand the price tag now. Right, let's get this on the roof. Well, the light's gone a little quicker than I expected. <sighs> nice and clean. Right, so we're gonna mount the scan strut pointing backwards. For me, that's the best way to have it if you know the direction of travel any wind and rain's going to we're going to be driving into it so if we can keep the seals to the back i think we'll end up with a better job so peel that off We've left a gap, so any water that builds up will run past it and it won't pool around it. So that is, that is I love this already and I haven't even finished putting it on. And that's it there, lined up perfectly. So right, we have four little screws to go in. Okay, three mil drill bit. I have a new favorite thing. I really do have a new favourite thing. Very, very happy with that. So from setting off to getting to where we are now, that has been about 12 minutes. And I will honestly tell you, I'd say five of that was pissing about up and down the ladder, getting stuff that we need to do the job. That is a great seal kit. I um, was a bit dubious about them, but you pay for what you get, 26 quid worth every penny. Always the way the lights come on when we finish the job. So while we've still got both ends of the cable inside the cab, this is a good opportunity to bell everything out. So with your multimeter, select continuity, get a tone, 
can hear that. And then get two cables, two NG cables. Now I've already marked these and built these out, but I thought I'll share it with you. So this one and this one. There you go. That's our pair, our both our ends. But a good rule of thumb is to prove the other cable as well. And to prove they're not damaged, do both ends. You shouldn't get a torn with this. Because if they were damaged and they rubbed through or somebody put a th screw through them, you would get a, you would get a torn. That's good. I'm happy with that. That's spelling out a cable. So we've put a cable through. Well, we've put about two metres of cable through, but both ends. So I'll show you in a moment. But we've attached them onto our cables and we're just going to pull them up now. So that's the cable looped in. All we need to do now is just gently pull that back. And then just push, push home there. I'm not forcing them in, I'm just guiding them in. I like that, that is good. Well, I promised you I would show you how it looked. There you go. <laughs> I've taken it apart again because I missed something out. I'm supposed to put some mastic in with this, um, with each screw. So I'm going to do that now, and then I'll show you what it does look like when it's finished. The light did beat us last night. We uh, we got the penetration done really quickly. It was just fitting the cable that took the time. So back at it tonight, um, and we'll try and finish everything off. But I'm just stood watching that sky. Look at this. Look at that sunset. Look at the clouds. Absolutely beautiful. Anyway, the longer I watch that, the less I'll get done. <laughs> oh, the farmers spreading shit. It's a good job it isn't smell vision because I tell you, you would be dry heaving so we're just going to fit an isolator and this is so we can work on the system at any point um, we know that we've got no power coming in so we just need to line this up make sure we know where we're making it off to so that's just going to sit there like that but where these cables come in so what we're going to do is we're going to push them cables down as far as we can in line with here with the bottom of the eye uh, with the breaker we're going to cut them cables. There you go. So they're the right length. Right. I've bed off about 15 mil of these cables. Um, probably a little bit too much. <laughs> but we're going to install these bootless ferrules. Now, if you look at the end of the cold bootless ferrules because they look like the little plastic bits that go over the end of your boot laces. So you basically just slide that over. We use this tool, which is a boot lace ferrule crimper. And we will just make these off nice and simply like that. That's all you do. What I'll do is I'll bring you in close now. You can have a look at them. That's a tidy job now. We're on with tying in the solar this morning so it should be pretty straightforward but I don't know if you can see we're getting bombarded by midges so they are everywhere and they're biting so I just want to get on get this done and get in the house so at the minute I'm deciding what I'm doing but I think that front panel is going to get pushed to the very front of the van I may replace these two or I may buy another two of them and use one of these to go at the front. Now, if this goes at the front, um, this, whatever goes at the front, will power the Roma battery. 
everything else on here and I'm trying to get as close to 600 watts of solar as I can that'll power the fog star so well charge the fog star but yeah these have been on three years now I could do it a little bit of a wash so I'll do that today as well but we're just going to split out these cables that there goes to the front MPPT and this little scan strut that's turned out really well that this little scan strut powers the rear MPPT. So that's all going to be as a temporary measure. I then need to do some calculations and work out what I can actually fit on this roof. I want to try and get as much power as I can between these two max fans as possible. And then that way, in the winter months, we've got that additional... In the summer months. <laughs> well, when the sun's shining, we've got that additional power. We'll say that. Yeah, when the sun's shining, we've got that additional charge and power. Anyway, time to get on. Midges about my ears. The solar panels arrived. I decided to keep everything the same. So what I did last year was the oddball panel that was on the front there. That was for a job where I was fitting a C-Tech and it just produced too much voltage. So I decided that if I'd put that on the C-Tech, it would have damaged it. It would have probably wrecked it, to be honest. So I bit the bullet. I kept that one, bought another one. Um, in fact, Renergy. <laughs> And I fitted that 200 watt Renergy and it did what it said on the tin, it produced 200 watts. Um, now, what I've done today is I ordered a 175 Renergy, because I've already got two 175s up there. The oddball one is going to supply the front, so I'm moving that right to the front. Um, hopefully that'll all fit up there and there'll be no issues with the Max fan. It's the one thing I've got to check in a minute. So we just we've just laid everything out. We've uh, we've got the panel here. I've made some brackets for it, just a matter of fitting it. But where I'm doing the work isn't the best place, so I'm just about to pull out onto the road and do it there. It's a little bit easier. So there's the panel. There's the specs, and these are the brackets that we've made. So they just sit on the uni strut. We push them all the way out to the outside. Because if you remember right, we have an awning here that sits. So these brackets are angled to go in line with the awning and gives us a little window just to, to do any work that I need to do, if I need to do anything. But I think the dims on this panel, even though it's a 175, are slightly different to the two that I have, that I already have. Fuse fitted. Um, every one of my panels is individually fused. So if it does fail, that'll pop and it shouldn't damage anything else. Well, this should be interesting. The park opened today. It's been shut for a few months. Um, it's absolute bedlam. <laughs> Look. All new equipment. So I'm making the most of it. I'll just, we'll just see what goes on. Just going to show you quickly what we've done. We've added another splitter onto there, the one we took off last week. Um, we've added in the meter, long extensions, so we can pick up the next panel. And now we're going to connect. It was a little bit harder than expected. So these, these are the new two meter extensions that picks the panel up at the front. So we'll just get all this plugged together and then we can start bolting things back up. There you have it. That's the three Renergy panels. This is the new one of the three. Um, but all three are 175s. There's the 240 all located. Cables dressed away nicely down there. And then I just need to just need to do something down here with this lot. So I've been asked a few times why I fuse the panels. And the reason is, if they were to go wrong, there's a, a good lump of cable running through that van that could go wrong. And on the end of that cable, there's a lot of very expensive devices. 
So if I'm losing 150 quid solar panel because something's gone badly wrong, I want it to stop there. And that is the reason behind it. That fuse is designed to protect the rest of the circuit. So fuse panel, uh, solar panel fails, fuse does its job and separates the fault from the rest of the system, protecting the rest of the system and <laughs> saving you money at the same time. So 10 quid or so, I think they're about 10 quid. So 10 quid against, well, all your cabling, your solar controller and your battery. A lot of equipment there, a lot of very expensive equipment that you may have to replace. So we got the awning put back on last night and my son stayed for a little while and we had a bit of a chat so I didn't get the final connections made off so that's what we're on with this morning and to be honest with you it's a much better day for doing this let me show you what we're doing so we've mounted the final pieces in our blue jigsaw <laughs> so we've got our MPPT uh, it's 100 volts by 50 amp um, that is the second one of them we've got fitted in the van we've also fitted our charger and we've put some containment in and that's just to get the cable around to where we need it to be and look tidy finally we've done all the connections we've got it all wired up as i want it to be it's time now to turn on the mppt we've still got a bit of daylight left let's see well let's set it up we've also installed this socket now this socket is connected to the incoming shore power now it doesn't it does the connection is made in there this doesn't have to be switched on for this to work. So I will put a note on there, a sticker that says shore power um, fed. So that there is only controlled by plugging in shore power. So as soon as you plug shore power in, that will power this. This will charge the battery. This is the battery charger, by the way. This will charge our Fogstar at 25 amp. So that's mainly for like long periods of time where we're, we're not going to be using the van and it just keeps that battery tip top and, and conditioned. So this little system here is on its own, but I can still remove that now. I've just run the cable around back up. If I need to put that somewhere else, just unscrew it, take it away. Separate the connection that's up there and just put another end on it. So the end that I've had, I've made off and it will stay on that battery permanently now. So you can just see the little tails coming out and sitting on top of the battery. And that top trunk in, that there is where the connection and the, the battery cable comes along the top and feeds through that trunk and into there. So we're in a position now to have a look at the app and see how we're getting on with the new MPPT. So we're looking for um, the new MPPT. So as you can see, there's two there. That's the one we've already got, so that'll be the one we're looking for. And this is going to ask for a password. Um, I'm going to type in the proper password, so just bear with me. Okay, so that allowed us to pair up to that, no problem. So looking at that, we've got currently. 60, around about 16 volts coming in and it will peak as it's a bit cloudy this afternoon so we're getting 121 watts coming in so that's around about 7.3 7 amps say that'll do us do you know what I mean <laughs> that'll do for this test but as you can see it is going in there so I'm happy with that we're going history there's no history today because we've just started it really there's nothing so currently yeah We've produced 121 watts, so oh, that's what we're getting. Pmax at the minute is 124. Let's go back. Now, did you see that when we went on to there? We had a little update there. Enable now, right? Let me let me update that. We'll come back to this in a minute. Okay, that's the update complete. Let's just drop out of there. So let's have a look at this. Let's 
it's got the settings, battery, battery voltage, 12 volt, max charge current. Well, we'll leave it at 50 amp. Let's have a look at battery preset. Um, select preset. It's a smart lithium. And there we go. Absorption is correct at 4.2. Um, float voltage, we'll just bump that up one to 1360. There you go. Um, we disabled that, we disabled that. Low temperature, let's knock that off as well, as the BMS will take care of that. So, and that is us set up. Let's pop out there. Right, we need to give this a name, don't we? <laughs> I've got to try and remember how to change the name. Right, I'll sort that out and get back to it. Product info. Let's edit that. There it is. Sorry, I couldn't find it. I couldn't remember. So let's change that to... Fog Star M. PPT done. Happy with that? Let's see if it goes back. Fuck start and PPT. What we'll do is we'll change the other one to read Roma. Anyway, that's us done. Let's leave this to do what it's got to do. So we're having a little look at the Fog Star am, uh, app and seeing what currently is coming in. So that's, we're getting 6.1 volt uh, amps coming in from the solar. Now, bear in mind there's 1.3 above that because we've got the inverter running. So that's probably around about seven and a half. Or, yeah, around about seven and a half amps coming in off the solar. Now I'm gonna flick the battery charger on, see what that does. So for a little while, that should go into test. Oh yeah, I'll show you that. It's testing the battery. Then it'll drop into bulk. So now we should see this go up considerably. There you go, 31.5. So we've got the 25 coming from the battery charger and we've got the seven or eight amps coming in off the solar. So I'm happy with that. Everything's working as it should be. Well, that's a job I'm glad is finished. So that's taken the best part of a month. I'm not joking, I'm not lying. It's just been stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. So we broke it up into sections. We built the battery frame. We installed the battery. We got that in position. Then we added the MPPT. Then we added the solar. We've added solar panels onto the roof. We've added that outside socket as well um, yeah it's just been non-stop and in the middle of all that the uh, the video files that I used to make the videos they were corrupt they were the wrong type um, so when I put the video together I'd mix two different types of uh, video and uh, the software I used didn't recognize it and it wouldn't play it anywhere so while I was editing it I didn't notice because it, it edited okay but when I uploaded it, it just went to pot. So that was the reason one video got pulled and there was a big gap before it got re-released. It took me a week to re-record that video and re-edit it and convert the files so they're usable. But we got there. I had to do the next one as well. So the video that went out before this, that was also had a problem with it. So that's us, we're done, we are finished. It's just a matter of now of running the system, rating it, see how it behaves, see how it handles itself. Um, previously, we've had no issues with our electric, but just we didn't have enough power. But now we, I think we've got more than enough power. So if you've enjoyed this video and you've found um, any part of it useful, or the last few videos, because if you haven't watched this whole project, this is, this is a whole, new thing for us we wanted to get rid of the gas out of the van which we've done 90 percent done we've got 
We've still got the water heater on gas and as, as I get used to this system, I'm going to look at changing that. But if you've found this video helpful, please, you know, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We've just broke 9,000 this week, 9,000 subscribers, so we must be doing something right. But there's a lot of you out there that are still just watching, you're not subscribed, and the subscriptions makes a big difference to us. It helps us out immensely. It, 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 it's a little reward for the effort that we put into making these videos. So I'd appreciate that if you could subscribe. If you think this video is gonna be beneficial for somebody else, share it. I don't mind you popping it into Facebook groups. I don't mind you sharing it on other platforms. Feel free, we do this to help people out. We show people what we're doing. By no means is this me telling you how to do your install. This is just how I've done mine. And if you can take little snippets of information away with you and uh, that make your installation that little bit safer, or you've took a bit of information that's made you think, I should maybe go and check that. I've done my job then, haven't I? But thanks for watching. I'm, I'm just happy this is done. I've got to start tidying up now. So that's the next job for me. I tidy up, I hoover out and put all the cupboards back. But yeah, the next couple of weeks we're going to be busy. We've got um, our crafty camp out. If you're coming to that, I'm looking forward to seeing you. We've got some lovely gifts to give away in a raffle. Um, yeah, we just... We just, st we need to start enjoying stuff again. We've had a, a bump in the road this summer. Lisa, by the way, for those of you that are interested, is making really good gains of getting back to full health. In fact, she's out with her friends today. Um, something in the summer we thought we'd never see again, but she's there, she's out, she's gone out. She's not drinking, you know, the medication that she's on. She's, uh, she's got, looking after herself, taking it really easy but is out there. She'll be there next week as well, and you'll see her on our travels. We've got a big trip planned for winter. We're going with some really good friends, really looking forward to it. We've got our own little face, uh, WhatsApp group, and the chatter and banter in there is, is brilliant. We're all excited. We're all looking forward to it. It's gonna be a brilliant, brilliant holiday and adventure. I've got some products to test while I'm there. One of them come today. Yeah, shit matters, apparently. <laughs> That is the slogan on their box. Shit matters. So I'm going to spend next week getting to grips with this uh, toilet. It's a toilet I've got. But yeah, we've got another bit of kit as well that we're going to be showing you. Um, it's an outside projector. We've had it on already. I've just ordered a screen that will magnet to the side of the van. So yeah, I'm looking forward to just getting out there, having some fun and having a play with all these gifts that we've been sent, all these products through the summer. Anyway, thanks for watching, I've bored you enough now. Crack on with the rest of your weekend and I hope you have a brilliant weekend. See you next week. What was that? I wave, I don't wave, I put my thumb up. <laughs> have a great weekend.